Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 23rd National African American Read-In. Uh, it's exciting to know that we're part of or over a million people across the country who are participating in this uh, event. Um, schools, churches, libraries, colleges are all doing this during the month of February, which is African American History Month. And this includes uh, readers from all ethnic backgrounds, the 50 states, District of Columbia, and even some um, African countries are participating in this event, or this kind of event um, uh, for uh, Black History Month. Uh, and the aim of this event is to celebrate uh, Black History Month by reading works written by uh, African American writers and to honor their contributions to, to literature uh, in our country. Um, and it's also, this event is sponsored um, nationally by the National Council of Teachers of English and it also is uh, sponsored by or endorsed by the International Reading Association. Um, so we're just part of a, you know, a bigger, bigger deal over here. Um, and locally over here, uh, the Multicultural Committee is sponsoring this. This is one of our first few events for the month. We're also, uh, uh, we have uh, other plans, uh, other events planned throughout the month. Uh, do you want to pop up the calendar? There's a couple of um, events that, oh, the password is, You know, there's um, Boston Globe columnist Derek Jackson who will be here on February 16th. And then there's a, right here. The second, yeah, the other one. Yeah, that one. There's a hip hop extrava extravaganza on February 22nd that usually draws a lot of people, a lot of music and dance. Um, and so you want, might want to keep that in mind. Uh, for the month as well. Okay, so um, I'd like to also remind you before we begin the reading um, that there is a sign-in sheet in the back. So if you haven't signed in, please take a moment to go back there and sign your name in. And if you are planning on reading and we encourage you to read, um, make sure you check off the box. This information will be shared with faculty who are uh, giving assigning credit or who have required you to be here. Um, and also, um, by, uh, when you're ready to leave, make sure you fill out the evaluation form that helps us bring, out, uh, bring on more of these kinds of events. And um, just so you know how it works, you can just you know, raise your hand or come up here if you, if you feel like you want to read something. You may pick a, a poem or an excerpt from a short story or a speech. There's a packet of reading that I've passed out to some of you. There's also several books provided to us by the library. So feel free to look through those and you can pick something short, something long, whatever you feel uh, comfortable with, okay? Um, so I'd like to open it up with, uh, by inviting Helene to come up and read our, be our first reader for us. Thank you. Good morning and welcome. This poem is by Langston Hughes. It's called Harlem. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a saw? And then run. Does it stink like rotten meat? Or crust and sugar over? Like a slurpy sweet, syrupy sweet. May it, ju may it ju just sags like a heavy load, or does it explode? That's by Harlem Hughes. This one's also by Langston Hughes. It's called The Negro Speaks of Rivers. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of. Human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like rivers. I've bathed in Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. 
I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans, and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden into the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. Morning, everybody. Uh, just a couple quick points before uh, to preface what I chose. Um, I wanted to choose something that I was familiar with, but not as popular. Some say Martin Luther King or Maya Angelou or Langston Hughes, like the first two people did. Um, so I, I ran to, uh, I have a Colin Powell autobiography, but it's basically his life story. Is, there's, there's, it's inspirational in reading his life story, but as far as literature-wise, I didn't feel there was anything in there. So um, I had on my computer just, uh, I went with one of my favorite songs when I was a kid from uh, Tupac Shakur by uh, the name of its Dear Mama. I don't know if people are familiar with it. But uh, a lot of people, I find, discredit rap music in general. I think it's a general, uh, generational thing where older people maybe don't get it. Like maybe their parents didn't get their type of uh, music when they were growing up. But I think all genres have uh, good and bad. So I think I, I just came up with some uh, off the top of my head, like classic rock. You have like the song Joker by Steve Miller Band, who it, it isn't like anything really inspirational. Then you have like Imagine by John Lennon. Same thing with reggae. You have like Who Let the Dogs Out by the Baja Men. It's not really relevant at all. But uh, anything by, by uh, Bob Molly pretty much is. So I'll just read the uh, lyrics to this song, which is like I said, one of my favorites growing up as a kid. Uh, name of it's Dear Mama. When I was young, me and my mom had beef, 17 years old, kicked out on the streets. Though back at the time, I never thought I'd see her face. Ain't a woman alive that could take my mama's place. Suspended from school, scared to go home. I was a fool with the big boys breaking all the rules. I shed a tears with my baby sister. Over the years, we were poorer than the other little kids. And even though we had different daddies, the same drama. When things went wrong, we blamed mama. I reminisce on the stress I caused. It was hell hugging on my mama from a jail cell. And who'd think in elementary, hey, I'd see the penitentiary one day. I run it from the police, that's right. Mama catch me, put a whip into my backside. And even as a crack fiend, mama, you always was a black queen, mama. I finally understand, for a woman it ain't easy trying to raise a man. You always was committed, a poor single mother on welfare. Tell me how you did it. There's no way I could pay you back, but the plan is to show you that I understand. You are appreciated. It's the first verse, and it's the chorus. Second verse, now ain't nobody tell us it was fair. No love for my daddy, cause the coward wasn't there. He passed away and I didn't cry, cause my anger wouldn't let me feel for a stranger. They say I'm wrong and I'm heartless, but all along I was looking for a father, he was gone. I hung around with the thugs, and even though they sold drugs, they showed a young brother love. I moved out and started really hanging. I needed money of my own, so I started slinging. I ain't guilty cause even though I sell rocks, it feels good putting money in your mailbox. I love paying rent when the rent's due. I hope you got the diamond necklace that I sent to you. Cause when I was low, you was there for me and never left me alone because you cared for me. And I could see you coming home after work late in the kitchen trying to fix us a hot plate. You're just working with the scraps you were given and mama made miracles every Thanksgiving. But now the road got rough, you're all alone, trying to raise two bad kids on your own. And there's no way I could pay you back, but my plan is to show you that I understand. You are appreciated. It's the chorus. And then the final verse. Pour out some liquor and I reminisce, because through the drama I can always depend on my mama. And when it seems that I'm hopeless, you say the words that can get me back in focus. When I was sick as a little kid, to keep me happy, there's no limit to the things you did. And all my childhood memories are full of all the sweet things you did for me. And even though I act crazy, I got to thank the Lord that you made me. There are no words that can express how I feel. You never kept a secret, you always stayed real. And I appreciate how you raised me and all the extra love that you gave me. I wish I could take the pain away. If you can make it through the night, there's a brighter day. Everything will be all right if you hold on. And it's a struggle every day, you gotta roll on. And there's no way I can pay you back, but my plan is to show you that I understand. You are appreciated. Thanks. Thank you. That was a 
Nice background information on that uh, uh, reading, too. Thank you. Uh, anyone else interested in uh, reading? Great. Thank you. Please come on up. Uh, I would like to say sorry, first of all, for my accent, because I know it's difficult to understand sometimes my English. Uh, so, um, and uh, I'm very glad uh, to tell you that, um, thank you that you organized this event, because it is first time for me to read African American uh, literature, and uh, I pick a poem. I went to the library uh, yesterday, or when, uh, Monday, and I found them, um, I never read African American poet before, and I found the Langston, how you say, huh? Hi, Hughes. Hughes, and when I look on all this book, I found that some, um, he traveled in Russia in 1930s, and he read some poem about my country, and I pick one because it inspired me, and I was inspired how to he catch the spirit of this country, and uh, reflect that's happened in that time in my country, because this uh, poem was written in 1980, in 1938, and it was the one hardest uh, time in my country when all people. Many, many people were sent to Gulag, to prison, and uh, so he uh, wrote this poem, and I would, I would like to read you, and it's very short poem, <laughs> so it names it's Moscow. That's, I pick this in a title, it's interesting for me, and this is a poem. Here are the red flags that wave in a bright silver glory in the dawn, the red, flags that, the red flags that ask no pardon to the past, dead and gone. So the all past, that I read it again. The red flags that ask no pardon to the past, dead and gone. So just this country we reflect, reduce everything past and gone, and, but it's in, reflect to many families and people who also was passed and gone during the repression. And it was very interesting to me to read this poem. Thank you. It's really nice to hear the personal connections with the readings. It makes it more meaningful to, to hear it uh, from the reader. Um, anyone else interested? I just wanted to remind you that uh, to sign in and remember to check off the box if you are participating. You want to get that credit with, from your professor, but uh, so that uh, you know they they know that you were here. Um, any anyone else interested? Okay, yes, please come on up. Hi, my name is Nicole. I didn't plan on speaking today, but. I have my first public speaking speech next after this, so I might as well get all the nerves out. Um, I did We Wear the Mask by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. I remember this kind of from high school a little bit, but I don't really remember it too much. But we wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile with torn and bleeding hearts we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be so overwise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but oh, great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but oh, yeah, the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile. But let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. Thank you. Okay, it's called To My White Friends by Claude McKay. Think you I'm not fiend and savage too? Think you I cannot arm me with a gun and shoot down 10 of you for everyone? Of my black brothers murdered and burnt by you? Be not, de be not deceived for every deed you do. I could match out, match I am not Africa's son, black of that black land where black deeds are done. But the Almighty from the darkness drew my soul and said, even thou shalt be light a while to burn on benighted earth, 
thy dusky face I set among the white, for thee to prove myself of highest worth, before the world is swallowed up in night, to show thy little lamp, go forth, go forth. Um, the poem I chose it was by Maya Angelo. Um, as I read the poem, like I could feel like every word she wrote and what she said and what she meant through it. I'm a, I'm a, I like to. Is it? Oh, sorry. Um, so like I said, like the poem that I'm reading is Maya Angelo. And excuse my, I got like a Spanish accent, so this is me. Um, as I read though her poem, um, she wrote here, like I felt every word she said, like I felt like she wrote it with love, like everything she said, she put passion into it. Like I write poems too, and not as these, but you know I write poems and I, I understand, I feel where she's coming from, background and. I'm going to read it. <laughs> it says, Willie was a man without a frame. Hardly anybody knew his name. Crippled and limping, always walking lame. He said, I keep on moving, moving just like, just the same. Solitude was the climate, the climate in his head. Emptiness was the partner in his bed. Pain echoed in the steps of his dread. He said, I keep on following where the leaders led. I may cry and I will die, but my spirit is the soul of every spring. Watch for me and you will see that I am present in the songs the children sing. People call him uncle, boy, and hey. Said, you can't live through this another day. Then they waited to hear what he would say. He said, I'm living in the games to, in the games that children play. You may enter my sleep, people my dreams, threaten my early mornings ease. But I keep moving, following, laughing, crying, sure as a summer's breeze. Wait for me, watch for me. My spirit is the search of open seas. Look for me, ask for me. I'm the rustle in the autumn leaves. When the sun rises, I am the time. When the children sing, I am the rhyme. That's my the poem. So I didn't really plan on reading, but um, I looked through the packet, and I really liked this poem, so I'm going to read it. It's by Margaret Walker Alexander, and it's called Lineage. My grandmothers were strong. They, they followed plows and bent to toil. They moved through fields sowing seed. They touched earth and grew grain. They were full of sturdiness and singing. My grandmothers were strong. My grandmothers are full of memories, smelling of soap and onions and wet clay, with veins rolling roughly over quick hands. They have many clean words to say. My grandmothers were strong. Why am I not as they? You guys are doing a great job, by the way. I hope more people read. Um, I feel really inspired by what I've heard people say so far this morning. and. Um, I wish more people were hearing what you guys have to say because you know, sharing the way that poetry and writing and, and art connects to you, I think it's such a great communal experience. Um, 
but we're going to be on video, so there will be more people hearing you, I suppose. Um, so I brought um, a book I, I just got at the library the other day by a poet named Everett Hoagland. And he, uh, for a while, was the poet laureate of New Bedford. Um, he was a professor of poetry at uh, UMass Dartmouth. And a pretty, pretty well-known guy in this area uh, for, for poetry, but also nationally known poet. And he writes a lot about our area, especially New Bedford. Um, so you guys might recognize um, some of the locations if you uh, pick up some of his work. I, I was going to read a piece about uh, called At the Hurricane Barrier, but I feel really inspired by all these poems about mothers and grandmothers. So I think I'm going to switch to something else. Um, this one's called Here, in memory of my great-grandmother, Martha Prattis Nichols Brown, who lived to be 111 years old. She rose from the rocker, unfolded the Afro-American article, pointed it out. Lord, this world's a mess. Folks fighting to be called more oppressed. Black folks, women folk, old folk, who's most oppressed? Me, I guess. Got it all being as I'm old, black woman. But so what? Whining never got even a kid more than candy or a pat on the head, nor a yard dog a kick or a bone. Struggle and strife are the facts of life. Your hard-working grandpa's dead, but you are the afterlife of his labor. Our work has been our worship. So take our tattered, threadbare, patchwork hope and work with it. Yes, kneel to God, but stand up to people who fight your right to the life God give you. Some say home is where the heart is. That's true if heart is courage, strength, and faith. Because in this life, home is wherever your struggle is. And son, the work's undone. We just cleared the ground, plowed, and planted. The weeding, watering, watching, waiting, the long work is up to you. We ain't no ways through. So yes, keep the faith, but keep the farm too. Hold on to home ground and learn that living should be learning too. So remember when Frederick Douglass read and wrote for you and Robeson, your Malcolm X and Dr. King, the main thing written clear right amongst these headlines here, the whole world's your home, you hear? Here. Thank you. Hello. My name is Alda. Um, I chose this quote because I think it's a nice quote. You get a lot of it. Um, it's about dreams. Um, hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field, frozen with the snow. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Elton. Uh, I choose uh, Dream the First. So, what happens to a dream the first? Does it dry up like a reason in the sun? Or faster like a sore and drawn? Does it stink like a root and meat? Or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sacks like a heavy load? Or does it explode? Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. My name is Marlene. This poem, Tylo, is I too, I too sing America. I am the darker brother. 
They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes, but I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll be the table. When company comes, nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen, them. Besides, they will see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I too am, am America. Hi, everybody. My name is Gesti Pierre. I chose her son. Ethan Herbson, and I've been waiting long for an Herbson. It is grandson. I've been waiting long for a grandson. Strong's has the bursting of young buds. Strong as the shoots of a new plant. Strong as the coming of the first child from this mother womb. And her son, a body son, a sprint son, and I've been waiting long for an her son. Hi, my name is Tatiana Gomes. I choose uh, mother to son. And well, son, I tell you, life for me in being no Christ of stairs. It's a hand, his heart attack in him, and the splendors, and the boards all torn up, and a place with no carpet on the floor. Bare, but all the time, I see I see being climbed on and rich ladies and reaching ladens and turn corner and some sometimes go in the dark. Where tell where tell on be oh my god. Will tell and be no light. So boy, don't turn back. Don't sit don't you sit down on the steps. Because you find it's kind of hard. <clears throat> Don't fall now. Don't you fall now. For is I still going, honey, I still claiming. Life for me and be no Christ of stairs. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ashraf. It's for Martin Luther King speech. I have a dream. And so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow. I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold this truth to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day, when the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the able to brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Good morning, everyone. My name is Edward Johnson, and I read the second part of I Have a Dream Today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with a visual artist, with a governor, with his lips, driving with the war and interruption and notification. One day, right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able 
to enjoy him with a little white boys and little white girl, a sister and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every village shall be exalted and every hill and mountain shall be made low. The true places will be made plain and the rocky places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and the flesh shall see it together. This is one hope, our hope, and this is our faith. That I go back to the soul with, with the faith, will be able to the hill of the mountain of the despair, a stone of hope. With the faith, we will be able to transform the jumble, the score, and the nation into the beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With the faith, we'll be able to go together, to the pray together, to stronger together, to go jail together, to stand up together, freedom together. We know we, that we'll be free one day. Good morning, my name is Anderson. I'm gonna read the last part of I Have a Dream. This will be the day. This will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning. My country is of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if I'm married to a great nation, this must become true. And so let freedom ring from the produce hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the high tennis alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from the stony mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from the lockout mountains of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and more hill of Mississippi. Let freedom ring from the mountainside. Let freedom ring. And if this happens, when we allow the freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we'll be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the, ne the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank you, God Almighty, we are free at last. Um, the words of Martin Luther King send chills down your back every time you hear them. It was Great, thank you, thank you for reading that. Um, any more readers? Um, great, thank you. Come on up. Good morning, everyone. Uh, -uh that didn't sound great at all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Look, I done came all the way from Boston to be here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Tia Castellano. I am a graduate of Bristol Community College. I am currently at the University of Massachusetts, Boston, leading the Black Student Center, um, an organization that definitely um, focuses on diversity. So I'm so pleased to be here with all of you this morning for the African American Reading. Um, this morning I'm going to read to you words from um, Sojourner Truth. Well, children, where there is so much racket, there must be something out of kilter. I think that twixt the niggas of the South and the women of the North all talking about rights, the white men, we be in a fix pretty soon. But what's all this here talking about? That man over there say that women need to be helped in the carriages and lifted over ditches and to have the best place everywhere. Hmm. 
Nobody ever helped me into carriages or over mud puddles or give me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arm. I have plowed and planted and gathered into barns and no man could head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and eat as much as a man and bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? I have borne 13 children and seen most sold off into slavery. And when I cried out with a mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. And ain't I a woman? Then they talks about this thing in their head. What does they call it? <laughs> Intellect? Whispered someone near, that's it, honey. What that's got to do with women's rights or niggers' rights. If my cup won't hold but a pint and yours holds a quart, wouldn't it be mean not to let me a little half measure full? Then that little man in the in black Dare he say, women can't have as much rights as men, because Christ want a woman. Where did your Christ come from? I'm sorry, I'm losing my place. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely lost my place, I'm sorry. I'm reading out the book and it's got some extra stuff I'm trying to skip over here for y'all. <laughs> But um, if I would, while I'm trying to um, uh, pull myself back together, I have brought someone with me who is near and dear to me. This is the president of the Black Student Organization, Grace Olajuwale. She's going to read something for you, and she's going to be hopefully um, on point. I know she is. I know she is because she does this all the time. So I'd like you to give her a warm round of applause. BCC, round of applause. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, can, I do, can I do two pieces? Because I don't know how stuff runs. Okay, I wanted to read one from me, and I wanted to do Maya Angelou, Phenomenal Woman. Um, this piece is called Red, White, and Blue. And according to my iPod, I wrote it 29 days ago. Um, okay, here we go. Staying true to the red, white, and blue is unusual, but it's done by many African Americans whose people were slaughtered and culturally left for dead. Orally bobbing for dead presidents that keep them down and make the dollar more alive whilst giving them head in their life. I'm talking one, twos, five, tens, twenties, fifties, a hundred dollar bills got my genetics running down hills like accident prone cups of milk. Sunday mornings aren't seen with the sun but ushered in with mooring souls with watery weeping eyes trying to see the light in the light. Flustered emotions flock hard like ice cubes to stereotypical social ice trays. Mirrors of reflections bounce off of too many disciplined children. Where is Jesus? Cause I just found some collateral damage on the steps of elementary schools and the janitors were way too busy cleaning your ass to come and take a look. So we got more stillborn youth and stillborn babies who go crazy when the system forgot to pay its respects. My nigga, you raised us to be this way more money for you, more problems for us just to get a piece of your American pie. My kin brain, I'll bust cause he a nigga like I am. So what you worrying for? Matter of fact, call God off the cross and tell him to stop hiding in the Holocaust. Not like it was the first time and it won't be his last. That's why many niggas would rather be buried not on their back. So just in case God tries to judge them, they can say, kiss my ass. I'm not an atheist, but there's only so much bullshit you can take high and low. I'm not impartial, so I don't believe in a limbo. But I know knowledge with street values that will make you get low. If you try to shine with shows that make you stomp more ground than Timbo's. Serpentine like 
savages, devour masses like white fall victim to blackness. For the sake of justice, I arrest and harass it while I dig for suspense like hot water to tea bag to subtract it. Even though through the struggle we will see the falling off in degradable caskets. So don't need to fake it or mask it. It's an economic havoc that still leaves the benefactors poorer even though they are the fathers but still seen as bastards. Statistical tactics that ration pain and tax it. Suicidal mentalities give baptized dreams and tub full of tears and blood that turn crip. Jeans, rip through his jeans, get what I mean, gangster tendencies since young 13, really a soldier, we feel the notice cause we extract emotions, an actual, natural reaction of humans that get questioned when the hardness can't come back with unethical practices, love is close, like the vision of skies, but still far away, like the definition of real space, drowning in bottles of liquor, I so surf to numb pain that took a one hour break, Coming back down to reality, the red, bright, white, and blue, I'm confused because I chose where to stand, but like birth, we stay in between the thighs or someone stays between ours to death do us part. Even that statement in marriage to all is a contradiction because we vow to do things without knowing the whole repercussions. Turning on slow love songs that's a bit too serious, but only feeding the BS we to get degrees in. Mastermind mechanic a criminal activity. But the difference between you and I is that the found middle grounds, M&Ms, got myself planted through politics and concepts. And while it took a matter for what it took a year and, and use your knowledge to address it. But I'm tired of dressing bullshit up in high heels, sneakers, and shoes. I think we all know what it looks like by now, even in red, white, and blue. And that's that red, white, and blue piece. Um, so I'm going to read um, Phenomenal Woman by Maya Angelou. Maya, I hope I do you wonders with this one. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size, but when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please. Into a man, the fellow stands or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say it's the fire in my eyes, the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist, the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. Then try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they still say they can't see. I say it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breast, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to get real loud when you see me passing it out or make you proud. I say it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care, because I'm a woman. Phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. I want to thank our guests from, for coming down from Boston and sharing that moving and very powerful reading of uh, Maya Angelou's poem. And I think you said this was what the first one was your own. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for, for that. It was quite powerful and well done. And thank you also, Tia. Um, anyone else interested in coming up and read? Okay, thank you. Come on up. Good morning, everybody. Um, before I say my poem, I just want to say recently um, I did a play, and it was about three African-American women based on a true story, G's Bend, 
which is a, a small town in Alabama. And I had to play uh, my part in the role was really being in the 70s, and um, I had to come back from the march in Selma, which was the reality that many people were beaten, killed. Um, so that really kind of hit home because I had to get into those emotions. So I must say that um, this African, um, this February, I feel it a little bit more after that, recently done that play. So I'm going to share a few poems with you. I, I know there was a time when a college dream, a college degree was just a dream. Just to speak of it would result in a beating, meaning that you and I, being here today, says much more than words can say. And others were blind at the audacity to want to read and write, feed their mind in a time when it felt like clocks stood still and hope hung high. Freedom was just a dream engulfed in reality's nightmare of countless blood tears and a million and one fears. Fearless hearts str strutted forward in hopes of no more colored only doors. Bloodshed wars of social justice, justice, just 40 odd years ago. Colored only doors was a reality, so how can racism be a fallacy? Something that happened way back when. I'm just going on a whim, but in reality, I'm going on whispers of our ancestors, on the shoulders of others that came before me. They fought to be heard loud and clear because they whisper to me. They whisper their pain and frustration. They whisper, we have forgotten, we have forgotten, we have forgotten. Thanks. Um, the next one's titled Greatness. As I stand here today, I can only imagine what others that came before me suffered and endured as they were wiped away from their shores in bloodshed wars. We were put in bondage, made to lay in airtight parameters inside ships, shipped away, shipped away from everything we knew. Our history and family trees shattered away, similar to ocean waves, having to start in a new plantation in a racist nation with whips and chains, and some were blinded at the audacity want to read and write and be free. Hope seemed something like of the past, and racism's grasp seemed like the only thing that would last. But still I know greatness runs through me. For the first African, men, um, first, for the first African that stood and proclaimed his land, and the countless slaves that stood up with their head hung high, Despite what laid before their eyes, they passed this message through their actions and words, and they told their sons and daughters that greatness runs through our veins despite what others may say. Knowing this makes our possibilities endless. That's why I'm proud to say greatness runs through us. Greatness runs through us. Greatness runs through us. Hello, my name is Joseph Thompson. I didn't plan on speaking today at all, but I was looking through these poems and I saw a poem through Nikki Giovanni. It's called um, Dreams. It's I used to dream militant. I used to dream of taking over America and showing these white folks how it should be done. I used to do dreams of being radical, of blowing everybody away with my persuasive powers of correct analysm. I even, I even used to think that I could be the one to stop riots and the negative peace. That I thought, um, sorry that if I dream natural, dreams of being a natural woman, doing what a natural woman does, she's natural, I would have a, ra um, I would have a revolution. Thank you for letting me speak to you. That poem that, uh, that you just shared um, reminds me of 2011 and how the, the whole year, Time Magazine sort of called that whole year the year of the protesters because of all the protests that were happening uh, in the Middle East and across the world. And I think that poem really speaks to the spirit of 2011. A contrail's white scimitar unsheathes above the tufts of anti-aircraft fire. 
before the Mullahs drill. Oh, the fire. Before the Mullahs drill on righteousness, practice rocks are hurled at chicken wire. Jihad.